everybody and welcome to the hot tag with your girl Izzy. Today I am so excited and honored to be joined by somebody who I not only respect but truly admire. He is a sports analyst and WWE pre-show host. He is the one, the only coach, Jonathan Coachman. How are you doing? Izzy, I tell you what, when the hot tag started, I don't even know how long ago, I was like, this oh. girl is on to something. And Thank when I you. first met you a couple of years ago, I think you're amazing. So uh, it is truly an honor to be on uh, on your show this week on the Hot Tech. Well, like I said, it's an honor to be interviewing you. Uh, what's been going on lately? Like, I know everybody has done their whole COVID-19 quarantine kind of hobby. Yeah. Thing. Is that the same for you or is there something else? Well, it, it kind of, you know, it crushed a lot of us and it crushed a lot of people and, and a lot of, uh, you know, I'm in, a, I'm in a kind of a world where I'm in very specific jobs and that was going great until March and then the pandemic happened and things are slowly but surely coming back. But a lot of things just got, uh, for lack of a better term, ill, you know, and so mm -hmm. uh, we're trying to be positive and we're trying to get back into it. And, uh, certainly the world of wrestling got affected, the sports world got affected, uh, and, and the sports broadcasting world got affected. But um, life isn't supposed to be easy, Izzy. It's, it's got, mm -hmm. you know, speed bumps, uh, and we're going through a speed bump right now, but I believe we're going to come out on the other end of it. At least everybody's trying to be positive, and uh, if you do that, then uh, we can all roll down the hill together. But it certainly hasn't been easy for anybody. Yeah, definitely. I'm just, I just want to go to another wrestling show. That's all I want right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been a part of WWE from commentary to pre-show yeah. panels, but you've also been a part of other sports shows from ESPN to the Golf Channel. Now you're talking yep. sports entertainment and pro sports, which for some people are completely different. Do you feel like the preparation and performance is different for pro sports compared to sports entertainment? No, that's a great question. And and I, I think a lot of the reason, Izzy, that a lot of big time athletes love pro wrestling is because they understand and respect uh, the amount of physical preparation uh, that goes into it. And also when you think of whether it's an NBA game, like when I did sports, so we're talking NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball, or you're talking about Monday Night Raw or WrestleMania or SmackDown, whatever it is, uh, there's a level of preparation that you have to have that is like what most people can never understand. You've got to learn how to, uh, to act, uh, how to express yourself, how to show facials, body, mm -hmm. uh, all those types of things, what you look like, what you sound like, uh, all those things are really, really important. Um, and I think the preparation for both, when I went to ESPN the first time when I left WWE after 10 years, um, I, I realized how much of my preparation is he helped me uh, for doing a live sports center interview after a big basketball game or a football game or whatever mm -hmm. it was. So uh, I don't think the preparation is that much different. It's just the level of performance and how high you want to take Definitely. it. And like, like The Rock taught me years ago, he's like, you know, take your personality and the, the way it's going to be the most authentic is just turn it up about 10 notches. And that's what uh, Dwayne said The Rock was, and that's what kind of Jonathan Coachman says that uh, the coach is. Definitely. I totally understand where you're coming from because um, kind of a little spoiler, but wrestling is fake, but like pro sports, they're not. Basketball, baseball, football, whatever you want to say, it's definitely – different uh so a lot of people in the pro wrestling community well let me think, let me jump in you know oh, let me oh no i want to jump in i want to jump in because <laughs> i want to protect you a little bit because we don't like to use the f the f word is a swear word is the in, in our no, world i know we right right <laughs> choreographed we like choreographed because here, here, here's you. the best example that i can give you is if i picked you up and i threw you across the room you would have to learn how to dance. You'd have to learn how to fall. You'd have to learn how to do it. And that is choreography. Uh, certainly, if you land on awkwardly and you break a hip or a knee or, or, or worse, that certainly is not fake. So, so we like to use the correct word uh, or words, as it were. So my apologies for interrupting you. you got, no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, but I definitely need to work on that choreograph. That's not okay. Me, not That's the F okay. word. <laughs> so <laughs> as I was saying before, a lot of people in the pro wrestling community believe that there will never be another mega superstar like the Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, The Undertaker, or even John Cena. Do you think that superstar is out there? And what do they have to do to get to that mega superstar level? Great question again, and it, it, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of how fast is it going to happen. And what's different now than in 1999 when I was just getting out of school and, and starting, you know, I started basically right out of school. Um, and yes, th that was a magical time. 
time. That was a, um, you know, I'm assuming alive then. And to, to see the, the Rocks and the Stone Colds and the Triple H's and the Undertaker's and the Shawn Michaels and all these guys at, at one particular time, well, people forget in the mid-'80s, you had Hulk Hogan, you had Macho Man, you had all these mm -hmm. different guys, uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, Greg the Hammer Valentine. So you had big stars in the 80s too, in the late 90s. So what's to say, Izzy, that we're not going to have another megastar come in 2022 or 25 or 2030? You can never say never. Every sport has its great uh, performers and athletes. So I believe there will be one that comes. Now, what's different is there's so many different entertainment options for people. So to get somebody to be that megastar that now with Netflix and Amazon and Apple and all these Facebook that didn't exist back in 1999 and 2000, that's the difference is you really got to get yourself over on every platform uh, and, and continue to do it day after day after day. And that's a hard thing to want to do. So it's going to take somebody very, very uh, charismatic, but also a, a workhorse as well. Definitely. Um, I know you're talking about like you have to be kind of over on all platforms. Do you feel like social media is the way to go or is there something else that should get you to the almost to the like the route to being a mega superstar, like I said? I think if, pe if people rely on social media to become a superstar, uh, they're going to be sitting around waiting for a very, very long time. Uh, I think really smart people are realizing now that social media is fake. You can use mm -hmm. the, the F word there. Um, and that it's not real life. When people say, oh, social media is saying this, it's about 1% or less uh, that are really, because really smart, educated people use Twitter or Instagram to push content out. When I watch you and I watch the hot tag or wherever you're at, you're pushing content out, right? So that's what really smart, educated people use it for. The ones that are negative, that, that tweet the, the, the negative comments or the insults or just to be mean, they're usually the ones that don't have a lot going on. They're usually the ones that are angry and they've got some something inside of them that makes them not happy. Uh, so don't focus on how many followers you have. Don't focus on uh, your reaction on social media. Just do what's authentic to you. And eventually that's going to take care of itself. Hard work is really at the core of what sports and sports entertainment is. I tell my kids all the time, if you don't work at something, how do you expect yourself to get better? And I would say the same for any potential WWE superstar or commentator or whatever else job you want in pro wrestling. Uh, if you're not willing to work hard, then why do you expect the, um, the results that you want? So those two things go mm -hmm. hand in hand, I believe. Definitely. So note to self, social media kind of doesn't matter, but, you know, keep it in the back. Yeah, keep there it in go. the back. There you go. There you go. So, there you go. Uh, so I mentioned before that The Rock is one of the mega stars pretty much of pro wrestling. And I use, I know you spoke before that you got to work with him on his promos. To this day, he has some of the most electrifying promos in WWE history. What was the, pro, what was the process like when turning Rocky Maiva to The Rock? Well, I was really lucky because I met him in 99 and he was really starting to become that megastar that we know. And then I, I started on the air in January of 2000. So, basically it was me and him for two years that we're doing all that. So watching him in the locker room and going over our skits and uh, coming up with some things that were uh, offensive to some, really funny to others, uh, but watching him and how he worked through it, but also how he would project and try to get me over at times when I was just the guy standing there holding the microphone, which is something he didn't have to do. He chose to do. And by getting other people over, you're, nine times out of 10 going to get yourself over. And that's the thing that Rock always figured out. Now, did he have the biggest ego in the room? How can you argue with him? You know, he's now the highest paid actor in Hollywood. So yeah. anybody's going to have an ego and you've got to have an ego and confidence and a little bit of arrogance to be at that level and be a worldwide megastar, which is what he is. People understand that you can't, when you walk everywhere and everybody recognizes your face, it's hard. So as he was developing who the Rock character was, uh, it was it was awesome to to watch him work and perform and go through all the different promos and then to get to to be a part of you know his his historic match with with Hulk Hogan in Toronto mm -hmm. and it was me and him just minutes before that uh, that's something nobody can take away from me and so I still look at some of the things that he taught me and how I've used them at ESPN and then how I use them whether I'm doing golf or whatever project I might be working on at the time um, but he's to me 
the smartest, and there's a lot of smart ones, but the smartest when it comes to psychology and getting yourself over while putting yourself at the least amount of physical risk that's ever been in the world of pro wrestling. You'll be hard pressed to find a video or a match, maybe once or twice that I can remember, of Rock doing anything crazy off the top rope or mm -hmm. anything like that. He didn't have to, because he told the great stories. Yeah. His face, his body, his, uh, his, his promos. He didn't have to do the crazy stuff, which is why he never got hurt, and which is why he was able to have a long career and, and come and go as he pleased. So I was just talking about promos, and you actually just mentioned it. What is something you look for in a promo? Is it like the emotion, the tone? Um, there are facials. Like, what is it? What's like the pinpoint for you? All of that, uh, but also mm -hmm. timing. Because uh, when you talk about The Rock, he, he's the only one that SmackDown back then was a tape show. So we taped it Tuesday and aired Thursday. But we still did his promos live because they were interactive with the crowd. When you can get the crowd to get into your sayings, and there's been very, very few people that have, had, have come up with sayings that the crowd will say with you. And that is mm -hmm. just heaven. And there's been two different times that I've been out in the ring with The Rock and somebody else where he was making fun of me and the crowd was calling me either a popcorn fart or whatever the, the case might be. And I've never been so happy to be called a name in my life. Right. So uh, it's a lot to be able to cut a great promo. And it's a difference between a superstar that can be really, really good who can work and a superstar who can be great. Cause if you can't talk and you can't get over on the mic, you've got no shot at becoming a megastar. I don't care how good your in-ring work is. It's just not possible. You can, you can, there, there's a huge list of, of wrestlers that have been good wrestlers, but you've got to be good entertainers. And that's the difference. Um, and the promos are the most important thing, in my opinion, even more important than the in-ring work. Look at Hulk Hogan. Mm -hmm. He wasn't a great in-ring performer. He had three moves. But he's one of the top three stars of all time. And you can't dispute that. Why? He had a great brand. He did great promos. What you talking about, brother? I mean, those, those things, are, they're little, but they're details. And they're details that you can't miss. Mm -hmm. I just got to say, I'm getting, like, a lot of advice. I'm taking a lot of mental notes. So future wrestlers out there, I hope you have a little notepad and a little pencil taking down some notes. Because this man right here, he is giving away some great advice. <laughs> Well, I tell you, I tell so, you what, you okay. already know, you already know more at 13 than most people who are getting in the wrestling business know at 25. And I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. So go ahead. Thank you so much. So The Rock ha has some electrifying promos, but he has also been an electrifying champion. Speaking of champions, your Kansas City Chiefs won last year's Super Bowl. I know you were at the game celebrating yep. with all the Chiefs fans, uh, soaking in that Super Bowl win. Explain to the Hot Tag viewers what that moment was like to share with your family. And I'm pretty sure there are some Chief fans watching this interview. And I know they're going to be really <laughs> excited to hear your answer. I, I've, I've always said that, that the, 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 the greatest part about being in the world of wrestling is sharing with the fans. And being mm -hmm. a sports fan, sharing with your family. And my kids love the Kansas City Chiefs because I love the Kansas City Chiefs. I grew up in Kansas. Uh, and I always promised uh, one of them, you know, I've got a daughter too, uh, that they mm -hmm. would get to go once, you know, we went to the Super Bowl. We'd never gone in my lifetime. I mean, we went like Super Bowl four. So uh, it was amazing. And it was awesome. And to get to go in person and to fly to Florida and, and spend that with my son, who's now 10, uh, was probably the best father-son moment that we've ever had. And for me as a sports fan, as a diehard Chiefs fan, there was nothing like it. Now, do I expect us to go to a few more with Patrick Mahomes? Absolutely, I do. Uh, but if we don't, at least I had that one, and it was an awesome win. Um, to me, there is nothing like the memories you make um, with your family because that's something, no matter what happens, they can't take away from you. Whether it's going to Universal, like I'm sure you have a season pass because I see you at Universal I, all the time. I go every time. week. I do go every yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> see? And those are, those are memories that nobody can take away from you and your dad and your mom. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's awesome. And to me, that's what life's all about. And certainly right now, this year, I would say most people uh, don't have very good memories because it's been one thing after another negatively. I can't wait to get to 2021. Uh, but we go day by day and we make memories as we go. So uh, I think that's awesome. And it was awesome for me.
Yes, definitely. And I know you said if the Chiefs don't get to the Super Bowl this year, at least you got to witness the one in Florida, but yeah. you will get to watch the Washington football team at the Super Bowl this year, and we will win. I'm hoping that they win because I am a huge Washington football fan. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I saw the pictures, and I saw your mom passed yeah. out on the couch. And I would say that you could take that picture of your mom, and that could be like the, the poster for the Washington football team's 2020 season. They're asleep. No. They're terrible. They're awful. No. They're, what are they, one and three now? I, I believe they are, I think, okay, they one are. and three. So, yeah, so it, it's okay because you can't back mm -hmm. off. Once you back off being a fan, Izzy, now all of a sudden they're going to get good and you can't jump back on the bandwagon. You're right. So I respect it, but you're not going this year, young lady. You're not going. Um, have you seen Chase Young? Because he is phenomenal. Yes, I know they're like one in three and everything, but we have Riverboat Rivera, and he's doing great. He's a great coach and everything, so I have a lot of stuff hey, in him. <laughs> I, I'm not going to try to change your positivity. Your positivity okay. is fantastic. <laughs> I'm going to leave that to you. Just, just know uh, that prepare yourself for disappointment. That's all. That's all I'm going to say, and I'm going <laughs> to leave it at that. And, and we will move on away from the Washington football team. Although it was cool what they did last week with, uh, with Ron Rivera and the cancer stuff. Uh, that because really that's cool. really kicking him in the butt. But it's very, very cool because cancer – I think that's one thing, too, Izzy, that's been lost in a lot of this pandemic is that people that have uh, really bad diseases like cancer – my father had a heart transplant a year and a half ago. He's gone through some complications. That, that we lose sight of those, right? We lose sight of those people that are actually sick with something other than COVID. And, and I think that's unfortunate because there's been a lot of people that have had some really bad things happen to them. Um, and that's another reason why we have to stay positive and that I'm always trying to uh, have positive messages wherever I go because uh, it's really easy uh, to, to get down these days. It's really, really easy. Yes, definitely. I hope your dad is doing a lot better. He's and we're going to jump into – yes, awesome. Yay. Now we're going to jump into the final question. Like I said earlier, you are somebody who I truly admire for your journey in sports entertainment and pro Thank sports. You. What advice would you give to somebody who wants to jump into the world of pro wrestling or even sports broadcasting? Uh, do a lot of it on your own. Uh, there, I think more than, than ever that there are a lot of really talented people out there that never get the opportunity because they don't have uh, the right advice or the right – uh, avenue to go down. Uh, nowadays with social media, with podcasting, with whatever it is, uh, you can do a lot of it on your own and you can work on your craft. And then when you get to an age where you can, whether it's right out of college, whether it's in college, whether, you know, you're a young professional, whatever it is. And then also hustle. If you have to, a lot of times I made $17,000 my first year out of, you know, be, before I got into WWE and I know I was fast tracked. But it's really, really hard, and it's a very subjective business. And even to this day, I still struggle at times getting, getting the gigs that I feel like I should have because there's so much competition. So be ready to hear the word no, but you've got to press mm -hmm. on. And anybody that's ever made it in this business long term had several bumps in the road. And so you've got to be ready for that. But it's also the most rewarding business, and it's the only thing I've ever wanted to do. And mm -hmm. that's why whenever I can, I try to help. Um, and I try to guide people in the right direction. And I, w I would just say that you've got to keep your head down, block out all the noise, and don't worry about how many people are watching your stuff or listening to your stuff. Just work on the craft and work on it in the mirror. Work on how you talk, uh, how you emphasize things, uh, eye contact, interpersonal communication. All those types of things are super, super important. How to ask questions, how to listen when you're asking questions. Um, those type of things will separate you from all of those that wanna be on TV or in the world just to be in the world and those that truly care about uh, the world of sports and sports entertainment. And usually it doesn't take very long to separate those out. Yeah, definitely. And I know you were saying how you love to guide people and you've done that to me in so many ways. And I just wanted to say yeah. thank you so much. Like, like I said, you are somebody who I truly look up to and I would love to have a show with you one day. Definitely a dream. Fingers crossed. So thank you so much for joining me well, today. I had a great time. Well, I can tell you this, that uh, since the moment that you called into Busted Open and I was like, who is this? Uh, I followed you. I've tried to help you when I can, uh, but also just let you do your thing because um, 
I've seen too many positive, really cool people like you get spoiled because of the wrestling business. And I don't want that to happen to you. So that I'm always going to be here for you. And uh, I think it'd be awesome to have a show with you one day. And it's, it's, it's possible. 2020 is possible. But keep doing your thing. And you created Thank this you. show, The Hot Tag and this brand. Yeah. It's awesome. I watch every episode. I watch every interview. Thank you. Uh, so it's truly humbling to be on your show, Izzy. Keep it going. Thank you so, co- thank you so much, Coach. I can't talk right now because I'm like, oh, my God. Um, but I, <laughs> like I said, thank you so much for joining me today. I had a great time talking with you. And thank you guys for joining me on this episode of The Hot Tag with your girl, Izzy, and Coach. I will see you guys next time.